My name's Kate Bradbury. I'm a garden writer and author specialising in wildlife gardening. I love trees and my most recent book is called The Tree in My Garden. One tree in one garden can provide habitat for an astonishing number of species, from aphids and leaf miners and thrips, to the moths that lay eggs on leaves and the caterpillars that provide food for baby birds in spring. When the leaves fall in autumn, they provide habitats for hedgehogs, toads, frogs to shelter beneath over winter. Those leaves are then taken into the soil as they break down by earthworms, which feed the earthworms and the other detritivores in the soil, which then break down the leaves into hummus, which is reabsorbed by the tree as nutrients. It's a wonderful cycle of life and death, birth and rebirth. It all happens in our gardens, all the time, just from one tree. It's really important to choose the right tree for your garden. There's nothing worse than planting the wrong tree, which will grow too tall, it'll cast too much shade, it'll drop loads of spiky seed coverings all over your lawn and mean that you can't walk around barefoot. There's so many variables to choose from when choosing the tree for your garden. Um, so do make sure you plant the right one. Regardless of the size of your garden, there is a tree for you. Um, you might think your garden's too small to take a tree, you might think your garden's too shady or too sunny or too exposed. Um, there is a tree for every garden. Um, you've just got to find the right one for you. And you can even grow trees in pots. Um, in my garden, I've got two uh, deciduous trees. I've got a rowan and a hawthorn. I planted them both so because they blossom in spring and they provide food for pollinators. Uh, they also provide berries in autumn. The hawthorn is a really good wildlife plant. So many species of moths will lay eggs on the leaves, which provides caterpillars for all the birds in spring. Um, and then in, when it gets older, it, it gets really gnarled bark so the insects can hibernate in the bark as well. Because it's a small garden, I've planted them at the back of the garden so they don't create shade on my neighbours or you know, too much shade over the garden itself. Um, and when you're planting a tree, you're, you're effectively planting up the sky. You know, you've got quite a thin trunk there and you're planting up this space that otherwise wouldn't be taken up at all. So you might think a tree is too much for a small garden, but actually you can fit quite a lot in. There's other ways of fitting trees into your garden as well. If you've got a small space, you can grow espalier fruit trees or espalier burying trees, which is, is training trees along a wire, basically against a fence or a wall, which takes up very little space, but has a really beautiful effect. Um, you can grow smaller trees or tree shrubs like hazel and gelder rose, um, which I grow as shrubs in the garden as well. You can also grow certain types of tree as a hedge and just maintain them as a hedge. So I've also got quite a small hedge right at the back of the garden. I've crammed in quite a lot of native species into this garden, be they standard trees, um, shrubs or hedgering plants, um, just to get the maximum wildlife value I can out of this very small space. Tree planting needn't be expensive. You can spend hundreds of pounds on a large standard tree that's seven or eight years old, but you can spend 27p on a very small whip that will grow very quickly. And so, again, there's a tree for every garden. There's a tree for every budget. The best time to plant a tree in your garden is autumn. It's now. We've got National Tree Planting Week starting on the 27th of November. It's the best time to plant a tree. Plant a conker, plant an acorn, plant a young whip, plant a 400 pound standard tree that's eight years old if you want to. Just plant a tree in your garden. If all of us planted a tree today, we can make a huge difference.